All right. So Psalms 136 is where we're going to go. I'm just going to grab, um, I'm just going to grab, a, you know, just a, a thought out of there. So every Tuesday morning, that's what you know what we do is, is we come together at 7 o'clock. Um, I think we've been rocking this thing now since 2012. I want to say it is that this has been going on, started out on a Wednesday morning and switched over to a Tuesday morning after a couple of years. And it's been going ever since. So whether there's few, whether there is um, many of us, we come together collectively for prayer. So every Tuesday morning, it's going to be seven o'clock. And then what we do is from seven to seven oh five is give you an opportunity to solicit your prayer requests where we come in agreement with you concerning those things that you believe in the Lord for, and then 705, we transition over to a focused thought. Now, our focused thought is based upon that, that which we are believing the Lord for is something that we govern ourselves for the entirety of the week until we come together again. It's kind of like a, a it, it's kind of like a mantra. Or so for, for the week, it gives opportunity for us to be able to say that this is what I'm holding on to. This is what I'm believing. So it gives opportunity to gain strength in that area for that week for that period and to have faith believers to join with us so basically if we did this every week for a total of a year that is 50 52 different things that we have bought before the lord and so when you look at it uh it looks it's like these are 52 things areas of development that i've had i've given at least a week to work on now you know granted it may run over but you know you've given yourself a week to to work on this so it is a focused thought where the lord shares with us concerning some things so this morning our focused thought is going to come out of psalms 136 psalms 136 this is where it's going to come out of and i'm just going to just grab a a few texts of scripture because what happens in psalms 136 my focus thought is going to come from the fact that um that it is stated for his mercy and do it forever that is what the focus thought is going to come out of but in psalms 136 that phrase is penned almost in like every every verse in that psalms it, it literally ends with his mercy endures forever his mercy endures forever his mercy endures forever that's what that that focus thought is, is that that the phrase that we're using today as our focus thought is pinned on that. And what I want to talk to y'all about is to give a little more context about mercy, just a little bit more context into what mercy is. What we know mercy is, we talk a lot about mercy and grace. I've heard um I heard a wonderful message uh, a lady did that I love called the Wonder Twins is what she called them, mercy and grace, the Wonder Twins. And so, but they're there is some some revelation that God has given me concerning these things. And so revelation regarding mercy and grace. Well, mercy is basically what I've known it to be is like the forgiveness of God. And grace is the ability of God is what it is, is what you can equate those two. So if I need God's mercy, then that means I need God's I need God's forgiveness. You know, I need I need God's uh, understanding standing with me. I need God. I need God's, uh, you know, I, I need him to look upon the fact that I am not, I'm not, I'm not adequate in a situation that I am literally in a position of where there is a, a deficit to me, you know, and I need God's mercy in that area. And so God's grace is God's ability. We obtain God's grace when we have the, the power to subdue or to do or to do a thing when God can put his grace upon it. God's grace is exemplified in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, he says that you shall be witnesses. You know, he says after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses. See, he's saying that that the Spirit of God is there and now the ability to carry out what the Spirit of God wants is now is now made manifest in you. So it is, and you shall become witnesses. That is the grace of God. But while in a position of needing God, in a position of being in a place where I got to have God, that is where I need God's, uh, his mercy. That is the, oh, uh, you want to call that the factory is pretty much what you want to uh, equate the 
mercy with. You can you can say, okay, so let's take the Toyota factory. Uh, they're in there building the car. That is the mercy. The car is at the mercy of, of the people that are putting it together. It has a vision of what they want, but it has to be assembled. So it is the mercy of someone else's hand. But once the car is assembled and it is placed out into the marketplace, it now is operated through grace because it now is the ability of God to be able to to function in what he designed it to do. So this morning, I want to talk to uh, just a few people and give some encouragement to you about what goes on and how to, you know, it, that it, about being in the, the factory, you know what I'm saying? Being in the factory, uh, being in this place of being worked on, you know, being put together. Father, I bless your name this morning, man. Listen, I love you, dude. It's, it's about being in that position, in that factory, you know, being in there to be, to be worked on. And so what it says here in Psalms 136, just verse one alone says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. He is good. He has a vision, basically. He has a purpose for your life. So I know I understand. I get it. You're in, you're in the factory. You know, you're going through some things right now there. Your wheels, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got the body uh, assembled, but they got to put your wheels on and all. For he is good. He has a vision for you. He has a purpose and a plan for you. And his mercy endures forever. So literally, yeah, he's going to stay right there with you until that thing is perfected. Okay. He's not going to abandon you. God, I love you, man. He's not going to abandon you. He's not going to walk away from you. He's not going to uh, reject you and all. He may reject if some things are not done correctly, but he's not going to reject you. He's not going to say, throw the whole car away, but he's going to say, I reject that part right there. That particular part right there, I cannot use because that's a defect in that part. If we send that part out on this car, then it is going to cause the people that will drive this car to literally be unsafe. And then we're going to have what is known as a recall. So I need to tell you this morning, listen, now, if you decide that you just going to go on out there the way you want to, baby, there's going to be a recall. Delphine, did you mean to do this like this this morning? Not really, but I'm going to do it. Listen, uh, you, there will be a recall. He's going to uh, call you back in now to have to uh, fix some things because a lot of times we will ourselves want to uh, just run through some stuff, just want to hurry up and get some stuff done because I really don't want to deal with the process. Uh, I really don't want to have to go through all of that. I've already been in this factory from what I consider to be long enough. See, what I listen to what I said. I said from what I consider uh, to be long enough, but God has literally a set of time as to how long it is going to take for me to be assembled, but I done went through this long enough. I'm tired of this. I want out of this, uh, and so I'm going to just go ahead and don't worry about that. Just just give me the, give me the wheel. Don't 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 worry about it. just just whichever wheel you got. I'm ready to go home anyway. I'm tired. I don't been out all day. I'm ready to go home. Just whatever you got. You go to the place and you know for a fact that you want to eat a particular thing, but you're tired. So just whatever y'all got. Just give me whatever y'all got. But you came in with a particular taste, but now you're going to settle for just whatever you got. Okay. So when we do the just whatever you got and you get home and you get ready to eat and you realize that they've given you just whatever they got. And so you cannot get upset because it's not to the quality or the standard of what you want because you accepted just whatever you got. And so now you want to call them to tell them, you done gave me something that wasn't even suffice. Well, ma'am, you said give me whatever you got because you were ready to go. You didn't want to stay while we fry the next batch of meat. You know, you didn't want to give the seven minutes. You just wanted whatever you got. And so now you're in this predicament. So now it's recall time because you done went through to get whatever you got. So his mercy, it endures forever, which means uh, that while I'm in the factory, God is going to literally stay there with me and God is literally uh, going to be there while the assembly is taking place. Okay, so God, you are assembling uh, my heart. You're working on my heart kit right now, uh, which is literally the engine inside of, of the car. You're literally working on my heart kit right now.
right now. Uh huh. So you want me uh, to forgive some people that uh, did some things to me long years ago. I went out in sin. I had no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees in agony, I prayed to Jesus and he gladly set me free. Okay, so he released me from the situation and the circumstance, but I still got residue that's sitting there. I'm still uh, I was holding people hostage regarding some things that went on in, in past times. I won't be a good to the new people that are in my life because I'm holding them hostage regarding some things that um, some old people uh, did to me. I'm no longer in the relationship with the old people, but I'm still holding God help me this morning. I'm still holding people hostage to uh, the things that happened to me. Uh, but God's grace, yeah, it, it's right there. It stays right there. Now, uh, God's mercy, I, I'm sorry. God's mercy is still right there because he knows that I've got to uh, go through this right here. I've got to deal with her regarding this process right here. I cannot move uh, from her until I can get her where I need her her to be. Uh huh. He knows. Well, well then, what starts happening is God puts the engine inside of, of the vehicle. And so now the engine has to be wired. So the engine is dropped inside. That is me going to the Lord saying, Lord, uh, please save my life. Come, come into my heart. You know, I, I want you to, to save me and I want to live for you. That is the, the act of repentance. And so the engine is dropped inside of the vehicle. And so then there has to be wiring that takes place and connecting of things. And so what that means is, is that God now has to connect me to uh, someone that is going to help me. He has to connect me to uh, someone that's going to teach me and instruct me in the ways of how, you know, of, of connecting things together. That is uh, of the Holy Spirit, you know, taking its place in the, on the inside. And so once that takes place, it now then has to go through a process of being tested. Oh, baby. Well, I thought when and the Holy, when the engine got put in and all the connections took place, I thought that that was it. No, sweetie, it's now got to be tested to make sure that everything is operating. Father, I bless you this morning to make sure that everything is, is working properly. But I need you to hear me when I tell you this. Please press in real close and hear me when I tell you this. That's when his mercy is really enduring forever. His mercy is enduring the greatest during the times of testing. Oh God, if I just stop right there and get out of here, that's enough to let you uh, be good for the rest of the week. Listen, his mercy is enduring forever during that time of testing. That is when God knows I have to literally stay there with Delphine during that time because because uh, when the engine gets turned over and all of these things, these mechanical things uh, that have been placed inside of her now begin to be tested. See, I've got to test to see have she really forgiven. Mm -hmm. I've got to test to see uh, is love really operating there? Yeah. Uh, I've got to test to see is she really a giver? God help me on this morning. I've got to test to see. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. i got to test to see uh, how is she really viewing things. I've got to test to see how, uh, how does it sound? Is the, is the engine sound? Oh Lord have mercy. Or is there some knocking noises? Lord Jesus Christ. I, I've got to make sure that all the fuel that has been put inside the oil, uh -huh, the antifreeze, I got to make sure that all those things are operating properly like they're supposed to. So you're going to feel a little tension, sweetheart, uh, and you're going to feel a little resistance, baby. But my mercy, Lord, help me please uh, endures forever. God, I'm trying to help y'all this morning to let you know, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, God is at his best with you when uh, uh, some things are being tested in you. God, I wish they would hear me this morning. Lord, I think they think I'm playing. Listen to me. God is at his best in you when things are being tested. Oh, God, I gotta get out of here this morning. God is at his best in you when things are being tested in you, okay? He's at his best. Lord, have mercy. At the time when it seems to you, he's walked away at the times, oh God, you know, I don't understand what I'm going through. Yes, he does, sweetie. His mercy endures forever, okay? His mercy endures forever. It's forever. He's at his greatest with you while you're in your time of testing. Father, help your children. 
God, I thank you this morning. He's at his greatest when we are at our place and our position of testing. Yeah, yeah, I know. You